torrent of darkness among the gusty trees. The moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon the cloudy seas. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor, and the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up to the old inn door. He'd a French cocked hat on his forehead, and a bunch of lace at his chin, and a coat of claret velvet, and breeches of brown doe skin. They fitted with never a wrinkle. His boots were to the thigh. He rode with a jeweled twinkle. His pistol butts a twinkle. His rapier hilt a twinkle, under the jeweled sky. Over the cobbles he clattered and clashed into the dark inn yard. He tapped his whip on the shutters, but all was locked and barred. He whistled the tune in the window, and who should be waiting there? But the landlord's black-eyed daughter, Bess, the landlord's daughter, plaiting a dark red love knot into her long black hair. And dark in the inn yard, a stable wicket creaked, where Tim the ostler listened. His face was white and peaked. His eyes were hollows of madness. His hair like mouldy hay, but he loved the landlord's daughter. The landlord's red-lipped daughter, and dumb as a dog he listened, and he heard the robber say, "One kiss, my bonny sweetheart. I'm after a prize tonight, but I shall be back with yellow gold before the morning light. Yet if they press me sharply and harry me through the day, then look for me by moonlight. Watch for me by moonlight." I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. He rose upright in his stirrups; he scarce could reach her hand, but she loosened her hair at the casement. His face burned like a brand, and as black cascades of perfume came tumbling over his breast, he kissed its waves in the moonlight. Oh, sweet black waves in the moonlight! He tugged on the reins in the moonlight, and galloped away to the west. He did not come at dawning. He did not come at noon. And oh, the tawny sunset before the rise of the moon, when the road was a gypsy ribbon. Looping the purple moor, a redcoat troop came marching, marching, marching. King George's men came marching up to the old inn door. They said no word to the landlord. They drank his ale instead, but they gagged his daughter and bound her to the foot of the narrow bed. Two of them knelt at her casement, with muskets at her side. There was death at every window, and hell at one dark window, for Bess could see through the casement the road that he would ride. They tied her up to attention, with many a sniggering jest. They bound the musket beside her with the barrel beneath her breast. Now keep good watch. They kissed her. <laughs> She heard the dead man say, "Look for me by moonlight. Watch for me by moonlight. I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way." She twisted her hands behind her, but all the knots held good. She writhed her hands till her fingers were wet with sweat and blood. They stretched and strained in the darkness. And hours crawled by like years, till now, on the stroke of midnight, cold on the stroke of midnight, the tip of her finger touched it. The trigger, at last, was hers. 
the tip of her finger touched it. She strove no more for the rest. Up she stood to attention with the barrel beneath her breast. She would not risk their hearing. She would not strive again. For the road lay bare in the moonlight. Blank and bare in the moonlight. And the blood in her veins in the moonlight throbbed to her love's refrain. Tlot, tlot. Tlot, tlot. Had they heard it? The horse hoofs riding clear. Tlot, tlot. Tlot, tlot. In the distance? Were they deaf? Did they not hear? Down the ribbon of moonlight, over the brow of hill, the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The redcoats looked to their priming. She stood up straight and still. Tlot, tlot, in the icy silence. Tlot, tlot, in the echoing night. Nearer, he came nearer. Her face was like a light. Her eyes grew wide for a moment. She drew one last deep breath. Her finger moved in the moonlight. Her musket shattered the moonlight. Shattered her breast in the moonlight and warned him with her death. How? He turned. He spurred to the west. He did not know who stood. Bow with her head o'er the musket, drenched with her own red blood. Not till the dawn he heard it. His face grew gray to hear how best the landlord's daughter, the landlord's black eyed daughter, had watched for a love in the moonlight and died in the darkness there. Back he spurred like a madman, shrieking a curse to the sky, with the white road smoking behind him and his rapier brandished high. Blood red were his spurs in the golden noon, wine red was his velvet coat. When they shot him down on the highway, down like a dog on the highway. He lay in his blood on the highway with a bunch of lace at his throat. And still of a winter's night, they say, when the wind is in the trees, when the moon is a ghostly galleon tossed upon the cloudy seas, when the road is a ribbon of moonlight, over the purple moor, a highwayman comes riding, riding, riding. A highwayman comes riding up to the old inn door. Over the cobbles he clatters and clangs in the dark inn yard. He taps his whip on the shutters, but all is locked and barred. He whistles a tune in the window. And who should be waiting there but the landlord's black-eyed daughter? Bess, the landlord's daughter, plaiting a dark red love knot into her long.